Okay, as I was saying, if it's not, if Joseph ain't his father, then how can you give a genealogy of Joseph to prove that he was what? The son of David, that he descends from David. Now we're going to go to Matthew chapter 1. And uh, verse 16 in this genealogy, Matthew gets a di different genealogy. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Now, in the Gospel of Matthew, we got a contradiction between the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. We got a lot of them, but, we, but this one in particular, it says Joseph's father was Jacob. And Luke, it says his father was Heli. Well, here, here, here's something about that. Now, they say, what, what they're saying now is, and I uh, talked to the two factor knowledge guys about this, and they, I'm going to tell you this. You gathering the Christ, ICGJC, UPK, Great Millstone niggas, I'm going to tell you this right now. The two factor knowledge, them guys cutting y'all ass clean the fuck up. I'm talking about like sliced turkey on Thanksgiving. They cutting y'all ass up, man. That's real talk. Everything they say, Against y'all, y'all can't say jack shit about. But when I start talking to them, all of a sudden they shut up, they don't say nothing. For example, when we was talking about the virgin birth, I said, you motherfuckers do not believe in no virgin birth. That's why I told the truth after knowledge cats. Because I always, when I deal with these Christians, I call a bluff card off the top. Instead of going into all these, because y'all want to go to the Greek word mean this. No, I call a bluff off the top. I told them, I said, y'all don't believe in no virgin birth. I said, if somebody, if a woman came to you saying she had a baby without having sex with no man, you wouldn't believe that. The guy from Truth After Knowledge going to say, well, yeah, uh, of course we wouldn't believe it if some girl said it today, but we get the Bible preference over everything else. We believe Mary was a virgin because the Bible says so. Motherfucker going to put that in all capital letters. I said, motherfucker, that's the whole point. Had you been a contemporary of that shit, Back then, and Mary told you she was a virgin, you wouldn't believe her ass either because it wasn't in no Bible. You can't believe it because it's in the Bible. You got to believe it because it's the truth. Because if in the time in the Bible when it happened, before it was written down, how the fuck did you determine whether or not it's the truth then? So if you was a contemporary, you wouldn't believe in it. And that happens a lot when I talk to you Christians. I called them off the top. I was like, if you were contemporary, if you lived back then, would you believe that? The answer is no. Then how the fuck? Do you think your faith, if you wouldn't believe in it if you were contemporary, how you think your faith is authentic now? No, you think you believe in it now because it's the popular opinion. That's the religion that everybody teaching around you. Just like I always say, if you was in Saudi Arabia, you would be a Muslim. If you was in China and in India, you would be a Buddhist. Or you would be in, in, uh, in a Hindu. So you don't follow Christianity because you, because you done studied and know it's the truth. You follow it because that's the popular shit that's being taught around your ass. So don't give me that bullshit. And every time I told, I told them guys from Truth After Knowledge that three times, I said, if you lived back then, you wouldn't have believed in that. You wouldn't have believed she was on version. And all three times, they ain't say shit. And I told them on different videos. I told them one on their video. Another time I told them on Man Up, one of Man Up Jacob's video. And they had shit to say. And they were talking all kind of shit before then. And when I brought that up, when I mentioned that, they ain't had shit else to say. And then I also mentioned these so-called prophecies that Matthew say the brother fulfilled. And they ain't had nothing to say about that. They ain't want to get into that. See, that when they play them games with y'all, y'all want to play the games with the Christians. I'm talking about you gathering the Christ, great millstone niggas. Y'all want to quote the New Testament like it's all the truth and, all, and so y'all want to play, the, play the, the Christians game. You can't play no motherfucking game with the Christians. They own game with them. You can't play that game because they play it better than y'all. Because they know how to just keep on spewing out shit without studying. If you don't want to acknowledge that there's contradictions in this book, you can't argue with no Christian. Because there are contradictions in this book. There is some fake shit in here. You got to acknowledge that it's been people that's been tampering with the book. You got to acknowledge that shit. You cannot hide from that shit, man. You can't beat them folk playing that game. It ain't going to happen. And when I hit them with the truth, they don't want to say shit else back to me. But when they argue with y'all over this bullshit, they cutting y'all ass up, making you look silly. Just like, the, just like with Edom, with the Edomites, and the, what the word Edom mean. And just like with the Lashawan Kadash. 
the dialect y'all speaking. They cutting y'all ass up. Just like Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. They cut y'all ass up with that. I'm talking about they clean eating y'all ass up with everything. And with all the studying that y'all do in these schools, like I said, with the dark ages and you and the gathering of Christ, nigga know about the Masoretes, Masoretes making up the Tetragrammaton and shit. If you know all this, why you can't get the information to cut these cats up? You must be studying the wrong shit. So these cats are cutting y'all ass up, man. But when I talk to them, they ain't got nothing to say. They run it. All right? Now, what they saying about the genealogy is, and the Great Millstone also says this, and, and the Christians going to say it because, because to just, why? So you can make Luke be telling the truth as well. They saying, well, the one in Matthew, that's Joseph's genealogy. The one in Luke, that's uh, Mary's genealogy, even though it's, it really supposed to say Joseph was the son-in-law of Heli. That's what they saying. Even though I'm reading right the fuck here in the book itself, and I got a 1611 King James Bible, and it don't have shit in the margin. There's a whole lot of scriptures in this Bible where they have a cross, and it say the Hebrew mean this, or it have a little two little two little lines, and then it say or, and a comma, and it, it mean could also mean this. It don't have none of that shit by this scripture, by this verse, saying the son could also be the son-in-law. Well, my question then is all the other names after that in this genealogy all the way until verse 38, which is the end of the chapter, is all of them. Is, every time that says son, is it talking about son-in-law or is it talking about real son or what? Uncle, nephew, cousin, what? Because when you read in Matthew, if you count from David to Jesus, you got 28 generations. But when you go to the Gospel of Luke from David to Jesus, you got 43 generations. That's a big ass problem. So you got 15 extra generations going on that separate the, the claims of these two Gospels. Do you understand? Let us read. Matthew chapter 2, and uh, we're going to read verse, uh, twenty-one. Now, this is after the angel told Joseph, well, look, you can go back to the land now because Herod did. Matter of fact, we're going to read the whole thing starting at verse 19 through 23. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in, in Judea in the room of his father, Herod. He was afraid to go there. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. First of all, when you go to the Gospel of Luke, it already tell you, that they was already living in the Galilee before Mary got pregnant. That they was living in the Galilee, and and it, here comes another contradiction between the two accounts. They was already living in the Galilee, but the reason that they that he would ended up being born in Bethlehem is because they went down to Bethlehem for the tax, for to be counted for the census. That was ordered by Emperor Augustus. So therefore, he, they was already from Nazareth. The Gospel of Matthew don't say nothing about that. The Gospel of Matthew just starts off, he was going to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. It don't say nothing about they lived in Nazareth. Right, matter of fact, it proves to you right here that they wasn't living in Nazareth because the way it words it in verse 23, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. So this is the first time that Nazareth is introduced into the story. And we're going to continue in the next part. 